everyone and welcome to Touch Base Thursday for January 21st. I am a little bit late today and I apologize. Um, we're going to be getting messy today with some embossing paste and I had to make sure I had all my stuff here and it took me a little bit longer. So I'm just going to give this a moment for those of you to find me um, live and make sure you comment and tell me hello and we will get started here in just a couple of minutes. Um, I make sure that I can see my own comments here. There we go. Hi, Karen and Denise. Hi, ladies. Um, welcome um, to our Touch Base Thursday for January 21st. Um, hi, Patty, Janet, Philomena, Luann. Um, hi, everyone. Yay, lots of you coming on. So I'm um, excited to share with you uh, some awesome things that have been going on um, here in the basement for the last um, week or so. And my microphone is plugged in, so hopefully we figured that issue out. And um, we will get started here in just a couple of minutes. Um, can you look up and find the page number that those are on now? It's going to be near all the accessories. So, sorry, I gave Natalie one more thing to do for me before we get started. Okay, hi Robin, Judy, Donna, um, hi everyone. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started because I think I've got a good number of you on here since it was me who was late tonight and I apologize. So I um, want to welcome all of you. Uh, just a couple of things I have in the way of announcements. Um, first of all, I cannot wait for you guys to all see my new website and my new rebranding project. I did post a picture last night of my new graphics. Of course, it still has to have flowers. I've changed my colors a little bit, so I am no longer having the um, the blue and the pink. I incorporated some purple and some green in there and I love it. And I actually have um, training tomorrow with the company who redid my website um, so that I know how to quickly um, update it. So um, if you haven't been seeing many videos on YouTube lately or many um, blog posts on my um, old blog, it's because I've been having issues getting them to, um, to post because my blogger that I've been using, and blogger is the platform that my website site was on has not been very good and so I finally just said enough's enough. Um, I knew I was redoing this project. It's been on a six months in the waiting um, to be in their work queue but this company out of Nebraska is amazing. They're called Integrant Services and they're a husband wife duo and she does all the graphic design and he does all of like the work behind the scenes. So he copied over all my content into a more secure platform and more user-friendly platform and so you will be seeing um, a lot more blog posts and videos coming through um, hopefully in the next week or so once we have that all fine-tuned um, so that's what I've been busy doing if you guys are wondering if you're thinking gosh Kim's been a little quiet not on Facebook as much not doing YouTube videos um, it has been a huge work in progress um, and a huge undertaking but one that I'm so excited to share with you guys when it is done um and so one of the things I had um, asked was, would I be doing new and some kind of new clothing? Because um, my flowers changed a little bit. Absolutely. So those of you that have the basement bunch apparel still wear the old logo stuff. I'm going to, but I will be um, getting a new um, new t-shirt, um, sweatshirt, and hoodie designed um, with our new logo um, as quickly as I can. So that is on the to do list. Um, but this has been I I did my website for the first time. With with the current um, design that I have gosh it's been probably seven years ago and I didn't um, when I wanted them to move my content over to a new platform I didn't have the rights to those images and the company quit um, quit uh, doing the graphic design so we kind of had to start over so I didn't really have a choice I just decided to make it more crisp and clean and I cannot wait for you guys to see the finished pro the finished project um, like I said it's been a huge work in progress and thank you guys for your patience if you've noticed that I had not been posting as much on my um, social media platforms and my YouTube videos um, I have videos done I just couldn't get them out there on my on my um, blog it was just crazy so anyway that will all be fixed in about a week um, but like I said I did get a chance to actually see um, the, the the shell it's called of what my website's going to look like and I love it I saw it today and it just brought tears to my eyes so anyway um, cannot wait for the debut of my whole new rebranding and website okay um, other announcements that I have of what's been going on in in our house so this week um, both girls are doing their class schedules for next year 
And I had a little bit of a deja vu moment because for the first time since my girls were in, I think, kindergarten and third grade, so Clara's very first year of school, her and Natalie were in the same school. So here in Mount Pleasant, we have different schools for elementary, middle school, high school. And as they're doing their schedules um, for next year, I realized that it will once again be the the the, the um, last year that my kids will actually be together in um, a school because Natalie will be, believe it or not, a senior and Claire will be a freshman next year. And as they're doing their schedule, I'm looking at this going, oh my gosh, how can that even be? I, I just, it's so hard to believe that they are already both going to be in high school next year and in the same, but I'm looking forward to the same school and the same schedule, whatever that might be, because this different schedule and different, it, oh, it's so crazy. But anyway, so that's been kind of what we've been working on, um, figuring out if Natalie's going to continue with her tech center um, career stuff. Um, Claire is going to continue with her orchestra and it's just been fun to kind of see them figure out what they think they might want to do um, when they get older which is kind of fun because I still don't know what I want to do when I get older other than be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. How's that? So anyway, um, but other than that we haven't really had a lot going on. Like I said, my project's taken a ton of my time um, but it was so it's well worth it and I cannot wait, cannot wait for you guys to see all of all of it done and all of it together. Okay, so as you guys know, if you're um, if you're new to watching my um, my Facebook Live, if you share my video, you get into the drawing to receive prizes. And um, I have two winners from our um, Natalie. Can you get me a pen, please? I have two winners from our previous sharing. Um, if you shared my video, and so um, the winner of the champagne rhinestones is Janie Anderson. So congratulations to Janie. Um, uh, Janie, I will get those out to you. And then the winner of the pastel pearls is my sister, Bonnie Kaiser. So congratulations to um, Bonnie and Janie. And these pastel um, pearls are already on back order. I was kind of sad to see that. So um, yeah, but they're like pretty... Um, Pretty, a pretty hot item, the high, which is part of the Hydrangea Suite. And I'm here to tell you, you will be seeing me showcase that on one of my Facebook Lives because I love it. I'm designing cards with it right now. Um, other classes that I currently have open are, um, so first of all, I opened up my bingo for February. It just opened today, um, February 17th. The email went out. I haven't even had a chance to post it to Facebook yet. But those of you that did bingo with me um, uh, just last night, it posted to our bingo group. So I always give those that played bingo with me previous uh, first dibs to get those um, spots. Um, I'm looking at capping it at 18 instead of my 15. I think we can comfortably handle 18. And uh, let's see. My lots of heart class. I have one opening in my Zoom class for the lots of heart. Lots of heart. It's those really pretty. I've, I've posted them before. It's the the cards that I created using the lots of heart bundle. Um, and I am actually using that bundle tonight, but for different cards. But um. It's basically, it's my first time offering a class over Zoom. It's on a Saturday. So basically how it would work is you purchase the kit. The kit includes the stamp set. It includes um, all the embellishments that you would need. The only thing you need to have are three ink pads, a blushing bride, Rococo Rose, and a black. And if you don't have those three, any two of the three would work or even like, I mean, anything would work of the pinks that you might have. You can kind of mix and match however you want there, but everything else is cut out. And I will be doing a, um, a Zoom, um, and I know sometimes Zoom scares people, but I will help you get it all set up on your device so you're good to go. But we'll stamp together so you'll be able to watch me make the card and you'll be able to do it together and we can talk and have fun. Um, I opened that class um, for eight people because I just didn't know um, how uh, many more than that would, I, with my first time I wanted to kind of go into it slowly. And I have seven of you that have signed up for that class. So if you're interested, let me know. I do have one more kit ready that I could send out. Um, the, the Zoom class is next Saturday from um, 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Standard Time. But I'm also going to do a PDF tutorial for anybody who maybe cannot catch the Zoom. And I'm also going to I'm going to try to record the Zoom so I can send it out to those of you that might want to watch the video who can't join live due to time 
um, you know, the whole time zone issues or just have something that's come up. But uh, I'll be offering another Zoom class in um, February, and it will actually be the uh, hydrangea class using the beautiful bundle that I'm designing with right now. And so I hope that some of you um, take advantage of that. It's a great way to stamp and have fun in the comfort of your own home and still do what we love kind of thing. Um, other class kits by mail that are currently still open are my my strawberry class. I only have like a couple of those um, openings left, I do believe. So strawberry class is close to being sold out. And then I have my Valentine's Day cards and I have um, my art, fine art floral cards. So those are all still open. And you'll be seeing a February classes post in the next week or so as I finalize those all tomorrow. So um, with that, um, just a couple final things before I talk to you a little bit about what we're going to be doing tonight. Um, we I want to make sure you guys know about the joining promotion. If any of you have ever thought about taking advantage of receiving 20% off your Stampin' Up! product all the time, you can join during Stampin' Up!'s amazing starter kit promotion during Celebration, where you get to pick um, $125 of product for just $99 plus your local tax rate free shipping and then you get those five free packs of designer series paper so um, that runs through the end of February and so I'd love to have you join my team join the fun um, be part of the whole um, Stampin' Up! group it's kind of fun and I think that's all I have in the way of announcements because I've been so busy with this last week. Um, so the company, um, like I said, I've been in their queue for six week or six months to get my website redone, but uh, they've been sending me work to do every single week for six weeks, and it involved things like picking out my color palette, picking out my fonts, um, picking out the structure of my my what I, they call your tree of how you want it to look. Uh, all kinds of things like that, and it's, so it's been a it's been a lot of work and a big undertaking um, on my end. Um, but it was kind of nice that I had the Christmas break to really devote to that. And I there's no time's going to be a, a good time. But they actually started their work just on January 13th with my graphics and me having so a lot of email communication back and forth with us um, for me to give them you know ideas of how I wanted it changed and tweaked and colors changed and shading changed, um, all kinds of stuff. So. Since the 13th, it has been a crazy, crazy week um, because they want to keep it moving, you know, because they want to get on to their next project. Um, so it has been, it has been really, um, really uh, stressful, but exciting as well. So, okay, with that, I'm going to talk, oh, I'm going to show you guys what's up for grabs this week for sharing. I realized I didn't do that. So if you share this week, you get the um, uh, two winners. I have the um, matte black dots, and then I have the... Um, the Woven Thread Sequins. These are the sequins from the annual catalog. So those are the two items that I have up for grabs this week. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I came up with my um, presentation for tonight. So, and first of all, I want to thank Patty Fike for the recommendation on this. Because I always ask you guys, what are some things you would love for me to showcase and show you on my Facebook Lives? And so I want these to definitely be something that you all want to see, want to learn, want to know more about. And Patty wanted to know a little bit more about embossing paste. And... um it can be messy, but it can also be a lot of fun. And so I went and pulled out my embossing paste. And well, you know what? My embossing paste, because I hadn't used it in two years, was all dried up. So I bought a brand new um, container of embossing paste. And I'll show you that in just a little bit. And I decided to showcase the embossing paste using um, a suite that is kind of current and trendy right now for Valentine's Day. The Lots of Heart bundle and um, we're only going to actually be making three cards tonight because it's going to take a little bit longer but I'm going to be showing you three different things that you can do to be able to um, to make these um, these cards and use embossing paste and hopefully it, it encourages you to add that to your next Stampin' Up! order. Um, also any orders that are placed over $30 you will receive the three cards that I'm demonstrating tonight um, and if you just go to my website at kimsbasementbunch.com there's a host code right there. Um, you'll be able to have these samples to, to look at and to be able to create additional ones on your own. So with that, I'm going to transition my camera down and then I'm going to show you guys a little bit about embossing paste and the products in the catalog and we're going to get messy and have some fun. So one moment while I transition my camera down and we start making some fun projects. Okay. 
So you're going to get a little sneak peek of what we're going to be doing here tonight. Um, and I see I have them down a little far, but that's okay. I will adjust that in just a minute here. So there's your little sneak peek. Let me also get my computer switched around so that I can still see all of your comments. Okay, so these are the cards that we are going to be making. And I'm gonna to talk to you first a little bit about the products that I used. Yes, Natalie. So um, what I chose to use today is, let me make the, there we go, okay. Out of our um, annual catalog, I am using the embossing paste the embossing paste is, um, you can get it in shimmery white or regular white. I chose the regular white and it comes in a little container like this. And it is literally like a paste, okay? And it's, I mean, it's kind of sticky, sticks to you a little bit. And then I'm also using the um, embossing knives. Now the knives come three to a pack like this right here. And so you have different, um, different, oh, what's the word? Um, kind of different tools and however you want to apply your embossing um, your embossing paste. Now I find myself using these two more than using this one and um, this is a brand new packet so I don't want to use that one because I have a packet opened but these are the two that I've used. Now once you make a mess of all of this stuff all that you have to do is put it in some, um, Natalie's actually getting me a bucket right next to myself or right on a chair next to me that I can put this in because it cleans up really really easily as long as you clean it up while it's still kind of wet and damp. If you let it dry, you're going to have a little bit harder time scrubbing that all off, and you're going to have to let it soak. Um, the other thing I'm going to use are the basic pattern decorative masks. They're six dollars, and they come in a cute little or a little plastic container, and they look like this. So these are your masks for being able to make your different designs. So there's this one, and then you have um, this one right here, and then you have that one. And last but not least, the little dots, okay? And so we used, I used three of these. I did use the, um, the I didn't use this one because I thought that one was kind of more for the fall time. So I chose not to use that one, but we're gonna use the other three tonight. And then we're also gonna use our new blending brushes. Now these brushes, oh, they're so lovely. They're so soft and I just, I love these brushes. Um, these are, you, you get three of these for $11 and it's a neat little way, a little alternative to using your sponge or your, um, your sponge daubers, okay? So um, you're gonna see me use that as well. Now these are in our January through June, our new little catalog. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do um, is, let me find myself a piece of paper. We're gonna use this paper that had my notes on it. So what I'm gonna do is you're gonna see, first of all, so again, the embossing paste comes in white, okay? And I um, am going to start with, what card do I have on the front, on the top, let me see. Bear with me guys, I have uh, stuff everywhere tonight with this one. I even have a little basket to put everything back in. So um, we're gonna start with this card right here. Now this card I used, the, the, um, the sentiment thank you is from the Lots of Heart bundle. And the Lots of Heart bundle is probably my favorite bundle um, in our catalog for um, kind of like for Valentine's Day. But what I like about it is that you can also use it for um, for uh, like just for love themes, okay? So you get this stamp set right here and it coordinates with these awesome dies right here as well. You can buy the two together for $47.50 and um, this is also the stamp set that I'm doing my Zoom meeting on. So this is the one for for uh, that class on June uh, or January 30th. Okay, so um, the hearts here though are not from that bundle. These hearts are just from the duo um, heart bundle in the, um, in the annual catalog. And so I punched them out and I ran these through the embossing folder with the diamonds embossing um, folder. I ran them through the, uh, sorry, the Stampin' and Stampin' and Emboss die cutting machine. Blah and kind of got a little texture on those. But this sentiment is from that other bundle. So what I'm gonna show you, and I wish that you guys could actually touch this, because I'm gonna actually scrape it. 
So you can feel that it's kind of got a raised texture to it. That's the embossing paste stuck and dried onto that, um, onto that. Okay, so it's kind of cool, right? So I'm going to show you how I did that. So we are going to start with, so my card base, um, we're actually I'm going to just do that part first. So this layer is five by um, three and three fourths, okay? And what you're going to do, you're going to need, if you want to color your embossing powder or your embossing paste, which is what I did, you are going to want, let me move my blocks out of the way here. I gotta make room. You're gonna want little containers to mix them up in. Now I had mixed these up in advance, um, but they, they ended up getting a little bit too dry, I think. So wh whatever you're gonna be mixing up, you only wanna mix up enough <clears throat> that you're gonna be using the, in that setting or in that, um, in that uh, time frame. Because otherwise I found that the ones that I did kinda got a little bit, a little bit hard. Um, and I did these on um, Saturday, I think it was. So I'm just going to put a little bit of embossing paste in here. Um, and again, you can kind of see the consistency. It's kind of like a little putty. I'm going to move that out of the way because we're going to actually be playing. And what you can do is you can color this any color that you want with your reinkers. And that is what I did to get that awesome color right here. Um, Karen, it, it, so far it hasn't. I mean, like I'm scraping it pretty hard here and it is not coming off. Um, so I think, I think we'll be good. So I'm just going to add a few drops of my reinker. This is the pretty, um, uh, the petal pink, sorry, petal pink. It looks almost brown in there, doesn't it? And then all you're going to do is you're going to take your little, your little tool thing here. And you're just going to kind of push in the color and get it to kind of blend together. Kind of feels like you're making a cake actually when you're doing this. <laughs> but um, again, it just takes a little bit of time. I was hoping that I could still use the ones that I did from Sunday. Um, but it didn't work. Um, and I'm gonna actually hand this to Natalie and let her continue mixing that in um, so that I can kind of get the card going and show you guys. But that's what you're gonna do. You're just gonna keep mixing that in until you get it to where you want it to be. Um, I call Natalie my wooden spoon. Whenever anything comes with involving mixing and stirring, she is like right there. So I'm letting her um, continue that. And then I'm just gonna start making the other card, the rest of the card and show you kind of what I did and give you measurements. So the card is a piece of um, uh, petal pink that is cut five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm just gonna fold that in half. And then I used um, a piece of five and a quarter by four foil, the, the silver foil. And yep, you can see that I punched out those two hearts from that because no one's gonna see that those hearts are on that. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the piece that we're going to make and then we, when we get it done, it's going to go right on top of here and it's just going to cover that up really, really good. So let's see how our paste is looking. Might be getting close. And if it's not the best mixed, you guys will get the idea. My whole point is to kind of have you be able to get an idea of, oh, she did pretty good here. Okay. So here's our paste all mixed up. All right. So what you're going to do then is you're going to find one of the masks that you like. Now the one that I chose to use for this card um, is this one right here. But I'm going to change it up for you and we are going to use a different one for this. So my, I'm going to change up my masks that I use just to kind of give you an idea of how they look and stuff like that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to set this down and when you lay this down onto your piece of paper you want to kind of make sure you have it lined up to where you have the same amount of the, um, of the design showing, okay? And then all you're going to do is grab your embossing paste and literally spread it onto your design like this. And you can see it's kind of going in there. You want to make sure you fill up all the holes. Now this does take about 10 minutes to dry. So in order for me to complete the projects tonight, I already have one that I've done up and ready for you. Does Natalie want to work on this? She's looking at it like, oh my gosh, this is so something I could see me doing. I can see her, see it in her face right now. You want to sit and work on this? Here you go, Natalie. Have a seat. You gotta hold on to it so it doesn't move. I'm gonna let Natalie try so she can see how quick and simple it is to kind of get that done. Yeah, and just make sure you cover up all the paper, all the holes. And then once we have that all done, 
we are going to um, pick up this. We, we You can actually the, get all the excess off of it pretty easily. Um, and you got a little bit, right? yep. And then you have an amazing little piece of um, paper that is embossed with this awesome embossing paste. Now you could also, like I said, buy the shimmery white. They're both $9 um, and you get quite a bit of it. Um, and so yeah, so scrape the excess off when you're back in your little thing. Take off what, no, put up, take off what, yeah. Get rid of what you got there first, child. All right, and then, yep, you're just gonna use the back of that and scrape the rest off. There you go. So this way, by doing it this way, you literally have minimal waste. You can see she's getting a lot of that off. Show the back of that so that you can see how much you still got off there. Isn't that cool? So a little of this goes a long way. All right, are we ready to see it? We're gonna pick that up. Look at how pretty that is. Now, my mask here has a little bit of embossing paste on it, but if you, um, the way Natalie did that was perfect. She got a lot of that off in advance. You can see that there's minimal on there, but I'm gonna put this immediately into um, some water so that this does not dry on, okay? So I have a, tub, a little tub of water and it's just gonna soak into that. Okay, thank you, Natalie. Isn't that so cool? Now, this is wet, so we're not gonna wanna use it just yet. Let me move this paper out of the way. Um, I do have more paper. So what I've done in advance, you can see that it's kind of raised up a little bit. It bows a little. That will straighten because here's one that I have done in advance. I'm using the same pattern that my sample has on it. And you can see it does dry nice and flat. Let me move that one out of the way <clears throat> so that it can dry and I can finish it and use it later. Isn't that so cool? And then the neat thing with this is, is this nail you're going to have to clean because we are going to need to do that for the next card. Um, and then you, these I have little um, containers that I could put that on, but you can see I did not put much in there and a little of that went a long way on the one that we did. Okay, so let's finish this card. Now you can color that embossing paste any color that you want, any color. That's the fun with that. So um, because I have one done and dry in advance, um, so this tonight's video took me a little bit of time to prepare because I was like, oh goodness, I have to have some of this stuff dry. Otherwise, um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna um, grab my adhesive. I won't be able to finish the projects if it's not dry in time. But I will bring that one back on and show you at the end of my video how that it's already dried so you can kind of have an idea. So I'm just gonna adhere these two together like that. And then I use some of this white ribbon and I'm just gonna put it around the middle. So this is bringing in the white with the, um, the silver in there as well. Natalie, can you bring me a pair of scissors? She couldn't hear me because she's cleaning the thing off. Sorry, what? Could you grab me some scissors, please? Yes. Thank you. Told her I'm gonna need help tonight. Um, yes, I could try that with a heat gun too. Good, good idea, Janet. Absolutely, a heat tool um, would heat that up and dry it fast. You just don't want to put it too close to that embossing powder or that embossing paste because it can um, burn it and make it turn brown. Um, lesson learned. I've done that when I did it and left it in the white. And one of the cards that we're gonna do tonight, I do leave it in the white so that you'll be able to kind of see um, how I colored it. Oops. All right, I didn't get a glue dot up with that. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this right around the middle here. And then this is gonna get, again, you can see I've used that to cut out those hearts, but no one's gonna see that. And I'm gonna put this here in the middle of my card. And then I'm gonna layer these hearts together. So I've got, um, um, one of the, they're both the same. I use petal pink. Let me layer this one together. And then those I put on with some dimensionals onto my card. So let me get a couple dimensionals. So I would love to know after tonight's video, I mean, once you guys see all the different things you can do, curious to know how many of you are going to consider purchasing embossing paste and I will tell you that um, uh, so I'm gonna uh, Kay my friend Kay um, 
who come over and helped with my online bingo, she um, did not even know we had embossed such a thing because it's kind of hidden in the catalog. She was like, that is so cool. I didn't even know that we had that. And so um, I was kind of like, yeah, it's the awesome thing about showcasing things that um, you don't normally see because not everyone showcases embossing paste. So um, I thought that was kind of a cool thing. So this punch right here, what I used here is the double oval punch. The double oval punch is in our catalog, our January through June catalog. And I'm so excited to have an oval punch back again because we used to have the separate ovals and I loved those and then we retired them and I missed my oval punch. And so happy to have those back again. So I'm just stamping my sentiment there and then I'm gonna layer these two together. They layer perfectly. And then a couple dimensionals on this. And going to put it onto my card down here. And then to top this card off, just going to cut a little piece of the white ribbon to tie on underneath here. And voila. There you go. First card done. I had to be honest with you, um, I was actually a little nervous about tonight's Facebook Live with all the moving parts that I had going on with embossing paste. Um, that I was like, okay, I can do this, but this is like um, just a little bit more, I don't know what the word is, but yeah. Anyway, so there is my first card. Now you could do this in so many different colors. This would also be a nice wedding card. You could incorporate the color of the wedding. So if the wedding, you know, was like a maroon or, a, you know, pink or, yeah, I gotta say pink, right? Uh, but you could incorporate this into any color that you wanted. Um, for any occasion. So um, yeah, and I layered the hearts a little bit different on both of them. So that is your first card. So let me clean up my mess of my embossing paste so that I don't accidentally um, put anything else in um, the way of my projects. Okay, so card number two. Let's see here. Card number two. I think we'll go ahead and make this one right here. Isn't this card pretty? I love this card. So when I was making this card, I was trying to find a nice color to put behind here. And I tried pink and I tried purple and I tried everything. Um, and the red just kind of made it pop. We just kind of um, thought that that made that card completely pop. So I'm gonna show you how I did this. You can see that this also has got the embossing paste. Now this one I used the, um, the uh, folder that I just used but that's okay because I'm going to use the opposite one for this one and show you how cool that is to do that one in just white. Um, so let me find a piece of my paper. Here we go. I had Natalie run up and get just some typing paper so that we could. Um, so this layer right here is five and a quarter by four, okay? And the uh, math that we're gonna use or the mask that we're gonna use is this one right here. And I just had that layered right on top. And for this one, we're just gonna use some white embossing paste directly out of the little tub. And you can see you get quite a bit of embossing paste in there. Now I did open this up for the first time um, to use it for my car my cards that I did um, tonight. But, uh, or yeah, I did these on over the weekend, I think. But yeah, you can see that um, it goes a little goes a long way on this now the white was a little bit trickier for me because you're doing white onto a whisper white piece of cardstock so you got to make sure that you get it all um, in there because you really can't see because it's not colored um, but you're gonna see how I'm gonna color this um, and make it just a real subtle bit of color on the back of it so um, you see I'm just spreading this in and it actually goes pretty fast Okay, we got a little bit more here to do. And you wanna make sure you hold on to somewhere the card, um, your card stack piece and your mask. Although once you kind of start doing this, the mask kind of sticks down to it all on its own. It really does because um, you know, you're sticking that, it's kind of like a pasty thing and it's sticking down into the grooves of your mask. So um, it actually works pretty good. So let me make sure I get all of this down here at the bottom done. 
super close. And then we're going to scrape off the excess of that. You can see all that white on there, and we don't need all that white. You'll see a lot of that will come right back off and go right back in the container. Okay, so here we go. We're just going to scrape it off. I think I'm good. So again, all that would have been wasted. Scraping it off. And I'm gonna call that good for the purpose of my video for you guys tonight. And oh, I'm glad you like this, Luann. Yeah, something different, right? So I said, we're gonna get messy tonight, okay. Put that in the water. And here you have, I'm gonna bring this one up closer so you guys can see it, how pretty that one is. And look how pretty it is, even if you just used it in white. Even if you didn't have, and I didn't want to color it, look how pretty that is. Now you can see that it kind of does go over the edge a little bit. That'll just put, push right off. Um, but yeah, look at that. Isn't that stunning? I love it. Okay, so let me move my mess out of the way on this one. Now in advance, I did one that's already dry. And it's going to be the one that you saw in my sample. So this is what it looks like when it dries. So I have one ready for us to be able to use to color. Um, you want to take that mat and just set it down? Thank you, dear. Okay, so for this, I chose to use the um, Coastal Cabana. So this is the, and yes, um, Janet, it would show up great on colored paper. So you could also do this on like a, a colored cardstock and do it in white. How pretty would that be with, um, with uh, um, real red for Christmas time? Oh, beautiful. Okay, so I chose to use for my focal point on this card Bermuda Bay, but I knew that Bermuda Bay would color the background just a little bit too much for my taste. So I went with the Coastal Cabana. It's similar, and we're just going to give a light little faint color to that. So I'm going to use that awesome um, brush that I showed you earlier. And what I'm going to do is, let me bring in my piece of this paper again so you can kind of see what I do here. So I get some of the, the ink off of this, and I like to just kind of wipe a little bit of it off in case you have any spots that are um, highly um, saturated. And then all you're gonna do is lightly sponge on top of this, and it is not gonna come off. It just gives a real little bit of a hue of color to this, and that's kind of what I was looking for. I didn't want it to be um, a lot of color. Now, if you wanted it to be a lot of color or you even wanted it to be um, uh, more saturated, all you would have to do is, um, uh, you know, get a, do, apply this more pressure, okay? So that's kind of what we're going to do. Uh, Mary, it does not take more than probably 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to bring in the one that we did first. The one that we did first is almost set already, so it's just a little tacky. Um, so 10 or 15 minutes is all that you would need for that to be able to, to dry completely. So yeah, not long at all. Okay, and then we're going to adhere this one together and make it look all cutesy as well. I love those brushes too, Philomena, those brushes. And they're so fun because they're so soft to just play with. I don't want to get ink all over my finger, but they're really fun to just play with. Okay, so I have a five and a half by eight and a half piece of cardstock. Do I have two of them there? Oh no, this is just the thick whisper white. Okay, and I'm going to fold that in half. And then what I did is I used, I brought in some of the red ribbon. And the red ribbon we're going to put around the middle of this using some glue dots. Let me get that out of there. Glue dots are sticking to my fingernails. <laughs> um, okay, whoops, so let me get a couple of glue dots on the end of that. And then I'm gonna wrap this right around the middle of here. And we can go ahead and, and secure this down as well to my card. So you can see I put a little bit more color onto my sample, but I didn't wanna take up too much of your guys' time because like I said, this does take a little bit longer to do. 
And then these are all hearts from those dies. This is one of the hearts from the die. This one calm coordinates. And then it's a little bit of a smaller one that I stamped in advance and cut out. And I love this um, like uh, plaid check um, stamp. You could do that in so many different colors and it layers together so nicely. So I'm just going to layer that into there. And then this I put on with dimensionals. I'm a dimensional hound. I love dimensionals. So I'm going to put three dimensionals on there. Oops, peel them off. And then stick this one onto here, kind of centered. And then this whole heart I put on with dimensionals as well. I'm just gonna put three on there. Take those backings off and stick that over here. Doing the same trick with my little piece of ribbon underneath here. Let me push that under. There we go. And I'm just going to tie that around. And then we'll just cut those off a little bit. And then I have a little half of an inch piece of um, cardstock. And then I did use the Bermuda Bay ink and I stamped your all heart. Now again, you could do all kinds of different sentiments from that stamp set. So the stamp set, I should probably show you um, what all comes in it a little bit up closer. Um, you get all kinds of different um, little sentiments, sent with lots of heart. Um, my heart smiles just thinking about you just a little note thank you all kinds of cool stuff so I'm using your all heart and I'm just gonna stamp this onto my cardstock piece and then I'm going to cut this part off I'm gonna use that on my next card and then you're gonna do a little bit of a banner edge to this so I'm cutting up the center and then going from corner to corner and then we're just going to adhere that with a couple of dimensionals as well. And for that, I'll just use a strip from along. And voila. There you have card number two. So cool. All right. So that is my second card that I wanted to share with you all tonight. So now I'm going to actually showcase my third and final project um, for you. And this one is so fun. We're going to actually have to have Natalie play in the um, embossing paste again because we're going to color some. There we go. All right. Sorry, guys. My video um, went out on me for a minute. So, okay. I should be back. I should be back. Woohoo! I fixed it. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit of um, embossing paste. Let me know if I'm back, you guys, because I think I am. I'm not sure why my video went out, but it did. So I'm going to put a little bit of this embossing paste into um, another little container. And Natalie's going to color it um, with some red, um, real red uh, drops. So I think, let me make sure I'm back real quick. I think I am. You are. Okay, yeah, Janet, okay, yes, I'm back. Woohoo! All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and drop in a couple of drops here. Now, this red a little goes a long way. I learned that. Um, and so I'll show you the card while Natalie starts to, um, to really get this um, going, okay? because um, that one takes a little bit longer to do. Let me bring the card in so you guys can see the card. This is my card. Woohoo, isn't that cool? So this one, I actually used the, um, I took a piece of scrap of my Whisper White and I just made it, um, uh, used the, the embossing folder, um, or the embossing paste and this um, die or this uh, layering thing. And, I, and then I cut it, after it dried, I cut it up to make a heart. So what I want you guys to do if you get this product to, to use it is to kind of think of a way in which you can do it 
where you can make um, it be a focal point for a card and not just for backgrounds. So you could make it be an actual focal point and layer that piece right on and it kind of matches what I did over here on the end. So isn't that kind of cool? So like I said, the one that Natalie has, I'm making the red a little bit not as bright because I put a lot, and I mean a lot of red in mine um, when I did the, the sample for you guys. So um, I'm gonna layer the heart together while Natalie is working on the um, embossing paste and getting that all stirred in. And again, it's the simple layering. Um, it's the simple layering from you know doing the same thing I did last time. I think the red is my favorite too. I really do. It's so pretty. So, so pretty. Okay. And then here I'm just going to make sure I get out all of these little pieces from my heart. They just come right out. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to put that on. This one I actually, I think, just glued directly on. I don't even think I did any... I did do um, embossing or... Uh, dimensionals on the back of it, the complete back of it. So I'm just going to put a couple on here and we'll do three. And then we're going to check and see how that embossing paste is coming along um, and see if we are close to getting ready to doing our neat little mask. Okay, so so for this I chose to use, let me kind of tell you the products that I used on this. I used um, the Blushing Bride cardstock for the card base, Real Red for the layer, um, five and a quarter by four, and then I used Whisper White as five by three and three fourths. Simple layering of those awesome hearts. Um, Mary, I'm glad you like this. I think you should definitely get it and give it a try. It's so much fun. It really is. That'll work. So it's not gonna be quite as bright of a red. Um, I probably could have put a couple more drops in, but we're gonna use what Natalie has. So for this one, I did not want the whole backdrop to be done. I wanted it to look like it was incomplete, which is exactly what we've got going on here. Um, and so if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I would love to try this technique, but I'm not sure I would want to do all over everything and make sure I'm that precise, this technique is perfect for that because you could easily just, you'll see, I'm just gonna swipe some on there and call it good. I got it on my pants. Okay, it would have come out now. Okay, so we're gonna put this over top of that. Natalie has our embossing um, paste colored. Here it is, all red. And all I'm gonna do is just swipe some on here and just kind of go with it. I'm not even making sure I have it. Um, some holes are gonna be covered, some aren't. Just gonna kind of go with it like this and leave it. So um, from there, I'm going to scrape this off again. I want a little waste. And that's where these palettes come in handy because you can really get right, you can get so much of that off there just by scraping it like that. Okay, so I'm gonna have Natalie find uh, lids for those. And that's gonna go in my little thingy to be washed. Okay, so we're gonna peel this up and there you have a back. So you can tell it's not quite as vivid red as mine. Um, but again, you can kind of mix and match on your colors there, however you want them. And then that is going to need to have some time to dry. But again, you can see that you just do a little bit of it and you don't have to be quite as precise. So I have one done up in advance that looks like this. And we are going to use that one to assemble our card tonight. So I am just going to, again, adhere these two layers together. And I did incorporate some, um, some of that red ribbon again. I like to kind of use the same products so that I'm not having 20 million different bolts of ribbon out here. Um, so I just kind of limited to that white and then the red tonight. And I'm just going to get a couple glue dots off there again, wrap this around. Um, so yeah, you can definitely thank um, Patty, Patty Fike for asking me if I would showcase this. Um, and Patty, thank you for the suggestion because, um, you know, one, you made me go outside of my comfort zone a little bit and I had fun with it. I really, really did. And I always like to have feedback of things that you guys might like to see or learn about. So if there's anything that you want to know or learn, I'd be happy to tackle it for you um, and see what I can create to um, showcase that. 
And then we're just gonna stick this little heart onto the piece. I've already got this heart layered. So hi, Kathy, I just saw Kathy's comment come in. Um, Kathy Stanford, hello. So you, isn't that pretty how you have the, the, the same pattern on there? So cool. And then I'm just gonna fold my cardstock. Again, this is your typical base. Um, this is um, the um, five um, and a half by eight and a half. And I'm going to Um, yes, Kathy, that's exactly right. So in this case, um, if I was going to do the heart, like this I did under the same dye a lot. So when I dyed that embossing paste, I used the same. So if I was going to do another heart for what I did earlier, I would use this color because then it would match. So it's just a matter of personal preference um, and what you, what you really, really like and what you want with that. So then I have, I'm going to bring in this little piece again. This is my scrap, that little half inch strip that I have. And I am going to stamp it with scent with lots of heart. I'm just going to stamp that right here in the middle. And, okay, that's crooked and it's going to drive me crazy. I don't want that on my card. So we're going to turn it over and we are going to try it again. Let me bring that down a little bit closer to me. That usually helps. There we go, much better. And then I'm just gonna cut this off like that. And then I'm gonna cut a little bit off on this end so that I kinda have the same amount of white on both sides. And then using a little, um, some dimensionals. Oh, wow, I got that one uh, perfect on the other side just that it's crooked. I'm gonna put a dimensional on each side of this. And that's going to go right across my heart, like this. Now you could also add some rhinestones to these cards if you wanted to, give them a little bit of pizzazz that way. Um, but I thought they were pretty just like this. I really liked them. So let me bring my cards back in, and then I'm going to also bring back in, and I know I'm almost at my full hour. I knew three cards was going to be plenty with this technique. Um, where's my, oh, there's my third card. But I'm going to bring in that very, very first one that we embossed, um, or did the embossing paste on it, because I'm going to show you that it is completely dry, completely dry. You can hear I'm scratching it. It is completely dry. And that awesome? So awesome. Alrighty, well that is what I had to share with you all tonight on what you can do with embossing paste. And I liked um, Janet's comment earlier too that you could also just do the white embossing paste onto colored cardstock to do like a background, like a white on a real red or <clears throat> white on you know black. Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be beautiful? The white embossing paste on black. Oh, just thought about that. That would have been a great sample to showcase as well. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed tonight's presentation of something a little bit different um, using um, the uh, <clears throat> embossing paste and those awesome palettes and the, um, oh, the, what are they called again, the masks. Um, and again, remember, anybody who puts in a minimum $30 order, you will receive these three cards completed, already mailed to you as my little thank you. And I always appreciate you guys joining me every Thursday. And I hope to see you guys back here for, I'm not sure what I'm going to have planned for you yet next week, but I'll be live back with all of you next Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks, everyone, and have a wonderful evening, weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.